terrorist attack against the U.S.? This is the point at which President George W. Bush should have declared mission accomplished, with the caveat that unspecified U.S. agencies and branches of the military would continue the hunt for al-Qaeda's leader. The world would have understood, and most Americans would probably have been satisfied, but we lost the compass, scrambling back to get to that equilibrium and found ourselves committing atrocities in Iraq? That's what it's like. When you just scramble, you're not quite sure how to put it back together so you can feel like your life is under control. Well, many centuries ago, there was a man named John who was in prison on an island named Patmos. And he knew about that moment. He knew about the moment when the context for his life, the fact that it was under control, was coming crashing in about him. He knew about the isolation. He knew about the loneliness as he sat there. The only freedom he had was to think, to meditate, to dream. And he knew there was a community of people out there. He knew about the churches in Asia Minor that were also living in a way where they didn't feel as though they were they were in control of their lives. They, too, felt isolated within the Roman Empire. There were sporadic persecutions, people dying for their faith. And even if they weren't dying, they were completely shut out from the emperor's cult. And since the emperor's cult doubled as a bank at the time, well, their future was uncertain. Well, they knew. They knew about the moment of isolation. They knew about that great desire to scramble, to get it all back. But at this moment, John turns his eyes towards heaven. John meditated. John dreamed. And he caught the vision in his heart. He caught the vision of the light that drives all of creation. He caught the vision of the logos of God of that word that creates, that, that movement that, that creates and continues to create within each one of us. What a vision of that light, brilliant and strong. That's what he saw that day. This one was the first and the last. This one held the keys to death itself. Having lived though he had died, having recognized that the power and the strength of the word of God moves from a place of death to brand new life, from a place where we've fallen apart and don't have control to a, to a new iteration, a new beautiful thing that God would have in place for us. I am the Alpha and the Omega, he said, the point being, and you're not. This was the bright light of creation, reaching out towards the people at that moment when life fell apart. And he reached out his arm and he touched John. No longer was John isolated. No longer was John alone. No, he had a vision in his heart of the bright light of creation, reaching out and grasping him, connecting him to something that was great and beautiful. Because there's a next. When you are connected to the power of a God that brings life from death, there is a next. Always a brand new glorious dawn awaits. That's the vision that John caught. Recognizing that he's not alone, it gives meaning to the direction of his life. Recognize that he is touched by the strength and the power of a creative spirit of God. He is aware that he is part of something, driven by something. He has a compass, a rudder. He tries to put his life back together to, to bring that thing about where he feels as though life can move forward again. He knows that there is purpose and that guides and directs and leads every decision he makes. He is part of the creative work of God. We've talked about this many times. I don't know what you think uh, when I say this kind of thing. Maybe you think I'm just trying to pretend to be Isaiah or Ezekiel or something, but disaster's coming. 
You know it and I know it. Frankly, you don't have to be a divine to figure that out. There are a great many things that are just sort of hovering like storm clouds around us, waiting to take us down, waiting to put us in that position where things have fallen apart, where, where the reality of the fact that we are not in control takes hold in our individual lives and in our corporate life. Those things are there. And here's the thing. John didn't write this vision down for himself. He wrote it down for a group of people that were living in the midst of a disaster because he wanted them to be able to catch the vision. He wanted them to take hold of the beautiful belief that God will bring about a next, that the Spirit will unfold and make a beautiful thing out of that which is disastrous and unholy. John didn't write this vision for himself. He wrote it to give direction. And why? Because John wanted those seven churches, the whole church symbolically, to shine like lights of the cosmos, to allow that message of hope and beauty to burst forth from their communities and into the world because disaster was coming. It always comes. There's always the death and the disaster before there's the new life and the hope. And John wanted those people to witness to that beautiful vision that the light of creation will touch us and will not leave us alone. John didn't write to predict the future. John didn't write to tell you about the millennium. John didn't write because he cared if you figured out who the Antichrist was. He didn't write for any of those reasons. He wrote to inspire and challenge the church. The world needed the message and the hope. The world needed the news that the light of God, the creative voice of God, lived out within them so that they'd have a compass, they'd have that rudder, they'd be able to move forward without making the mistakes, without destroying who they were. That's why John wrote. I am the Alpha and the Omega. And you're not. That's good news. It catches us up and brings us into the future. But it is good news that must be shared.